Welcome to Tattoo Tabletop. My name is James, and today I found something at my door. Well, actually, I got it from the packaging system, but look what I found. A Fanatic Mega Set from the Army Painter. They sent this over to me. Uh, thank you so much to the Army Painter for sending this over. Again, um, if you saw my video a couple weeks ago for covering from Adepticon, I got my hands on the Fanatic paints, and I absolutely loved them so it was so nice of them to send this i really can't wait to dive in i mean as far as like an actual value the there's quite a few colors in here and the overall color wheel is really really expansive including some colors like your pinks your purples um, and of course it has my favorite stretch of colors which are the blues and the teals and everything like that so i had to give it some thought what did i want to paint with what with this set what could i show off that would do a decent amount of justice to this box or at least give you some sort of idea as to whether or not that this box is going to be a good value for you and i've come to the inevitable conclusion why not paint some new miniatures of mine that i just picked up specifically callus and toll and companions the way I kind of figured it is looking at some of the colors in the box, I figured that I should be able to create a cool enough color scheme along with them because we'll get to use some of those blues for the Stormcast cape, we'll get to use the dark browns and things like that for the leathers and of course the metallics for the armor. I figured that this would cover a wide range of everything. So it would give us the opportunity to utilize a decent amount that's in the mega set and kind of give you a better idea as to what is going to be the best value for you if you're looking at the Fanatic War paints and that range in general. So enough talking, let's pick up some paintbrushes. All right, so we got the mega paint set right in front of us here and you can see the collection of paints. Let's take a look inside. So we've got all the paints arranged in here, right around their rough triads, but obviously these aren't the complete triads. So we're gonna struggle to pick up a bottle here and here we've got Abyssal Blue and the nice thing about the bottles is it has a lot of good information like where it falls on the triad as well as a act or accurate description of the bottle so that's super helpful also comes with a happy little brush happy little character brush so you get to include that as well and it also has a rack yeah yeah we'll, we'll just use the word rack it has a paint rack that comes with it that's super nice as well so let's dive in first things first as we can see i already started with one step where i took the gold and i dry brush it all over the stormcast why because He's gold, and this is a personal step that I like to do for a lot of my gold. It kind of has a nice antique vibe to it, but the rest of them are still primed black, which is what I started with, all of them, and uh, I'm just going to throw this out there right now. You see the happy little griff hound in the uh, corner there? I'm sorry. I set him off to the side. I completely forgot him, so when you see him missing at the end, feel free to yell at me, I guess, but uh, let's just start with how we usually like to start. Testing our dry brush, getting a little bit of that matte white, wiping a little bit of it off on the paper towel, testing it on our hand to make sure that we don't uh, overflow on it, and we're just going to start slap chopping away. Now, slap chop gets a lot of grief, but the one thing I always appreciate about it is, even if I'm just doing standard acrylics, is it's not going to mess anything up really. What it's going to do is it's going to show me the raised areas. It's gonna show me where the edges are at their highest point. So even if you're not using Slap Chop in its core principle, you know, with acrylics or with the contrast specifically, it's still gonna be very useful just to give you reference, let you know where those heightened areas are and kind of provides a nice framework. So we're just gonna go ahead and we're just gonna do that across all of the characters minus the Griffound because because I'm a, I'm a forgetful boy. You should know this by now. All right, now that we got that in place, I also completely forgot about the base. The nice thing about the Callus and Toll and Companions is that they actually come with happy little decorative bases. So don't forget to do a little slap chop on that. But now we're just gonna make our palette and set it up for all the colors we're gonna use. So we're gonna start with this Imperial Navy color and we're just gonna gather every color that we're looking for across multiple models here. So I'm gonna get the lighter shades, the darker shades. I'm gonna even get some of this Thunderous Blue for 
for the back of her cape for edge highlighting stuff like that but we're just gonna set everything up for success then that way too when it comes to paint mixing of course you gotta have some matte black i mean it's it's black it's good there's always something that's gonna be used for that set that up there some deep gray the nice thing about all these paints is again you kind of know where they stand that's one thing that's very nice about the mega set is it adds a lot of flexibility so now that we've got these paints all mixed together i'm going to start with the brighter blue and we're just going to start covering the cloth bits so we're just going to get the crotch there oh god i just said crotch oh no youtube don't do this to me all right well we're just going to go back to the cape so i'm just going to get a nice base coat layer here and the nice part about all this is again as Army painter has stated in multiple pieces of marketing you can see the coverage is solid it gets it in one nice opaque color and if even if it doesn't it's still usually like two thin coats yes i know i said it so sue me but it's really good coverage i really appreciate it and it also gives you a little bit longer working time for any blends that you might be doing so we're gonna start with this brighter color and then we'll hop on to the next step All right, so next step is I'm gonna set some recessed shading. And what I did is I mixed in a little bit of the matte black into that blue. Now, I've seen some criticism online that says that you can't mix the white or the black to make a higher or lower gradient of a color. I found no issue with that. It really just comes down to balancing the amount. You have to do it gradually with smaller amounts of the black or the white in order to build up that color. Um, if you do try and mix it one to one, then yes, I did notice that it would kind of turn to some sort of grayish color. But if you blend it very nicely and you kind of move your way up or down intermittently, it mixes nicely. But let's get some skin. So fortunately, the mega set comes with two different skin tones, one darker tone, one brighter tone. So we're obviously going to lay down the base layer because we're painting all these guys with just the mega set. No other things, only mega set. So let's just go ahead and let's get that. Most of these characters just have their face exposed. In the case of the Stormcast Eternal, he's got a uh, He's got his whole head exposed for all that, so we're just going to pick out those details and just get them one nice base coat layer. And of course we got this happy lady. I still can't remember her name, but she's only got half a face because the other half is wearing some glitzy mask of magic and mystery. Okay, like I read the story in the new Dawnbringers book. I just, I just can't remember what it is. So, but let's go ahead and let's base layer the entirety of this dude's head. Again, super nice coverage from here, which is exactly what you want for any sort of base paint that you're using. Covers very nice. There's a couple spots where I did have to do two coats on it, but nothing, I wouldn't consider it a ton of extra work. Next up, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take some black here. Now, this is a nice feature of the war paints is specifically what I did is I took the matte black and I actually reduced it just using water enough to act like a sort of contrast paint or like a speed paint, because that's obviously the army painter's range. But if you reduce it enough, it will flow into those recesses. It'll still tint enough because it has a high enough pigmentation, but it will also behave like a contrast would. So I was able to use that on Callus's pants there, which was super helpful. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight up some of his chest piece. So on Callus, I actually went over it with one of the speed paints. I did use uh, Satchel Brown real quick, just kind of thin down there. But basically I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pick up those raised areas, kind of give it more of that light brown beige-ish color rather than leaving it that darker brown. So it kind of gives it a nice little pop of color. And I was just able to do that by, you know, mixing in a little bit of white and a little bit of dark. So. And for Hanover Toll himself, he's got kind of a darker red-ish color on a lot of his cloak and stuff like that. So we're just gonna switch to Mulberry for that. Again, 
said it once, say it again. These paints have really good coverage. They mix really well. They give you a longer work time if you want to blend. Otherwise, I was pretty easily able to create any mixes between the colors to pick up certain areas, like underneath his, you know, tur cloak turn. Yeah, whatever it is. But next, we're gonna test out some of the shades. Uh, admittedly, this part kind of drops out, but spoiler alert, it works like a shade and it works really nicely. You just let it, you just mix it in, water it down a little bit, and you just cover it over the skin areas. Easy peasy. In the case of uh, Callus, he it has a little bit darker skin, but it settles into the recesses nicely with a brighter undercoat. Now, onto the question the white. How did that come out? It did take a few layers, but that's probably a little bit on my half, because let's just be real, white paint is always a pain. It always will be a pain from miniature beginning to miniature end. But you know, you can help that out with a few of your base coat layers as well. Otherwise, we're just gonna kind of cycle through some of the details, including doing that reduced black sort of contrast using just matte black. Um, it's easy to, again, easy enough to water down, which is what makes this paint really fantastic for me, is I always prefer a paint that's gonna have a higher opacity and it's gonna be easier to reduce. But on to the next bit, what do we need to cover? The metallics, how do they handle? Obviously we dry brushed the gold, that worked well enough, but now we need to test out the, the overall coverage of the metallics. And I am happy to say, very, very smooth coverage. Now you might not get much of it here from this half of her face because she's about to perform in the theater that the Phantom of the Opera lived in, but as far as Callus himself, really really smooth coverage very opaque any mistakes that i had with the other acrylics on there it covered immediately i mean i haven't felt this good about a metallic since vallejo air metal silver which is easily one of my favorites right here you see it get a little watery but that's also my fault i had kind of watered it down just a little bit too much and probably got a little excess primer you know some of that where the surface gets a little uneven but not too bad and this is what he looks like finished. At least not completely finished. We still gotta do a wash, but we gotta pick out some of the gold. Gold on brush, spoiler alert. Acts like gold, covers very nicely. Easily one of my favorite golds, which is always nice, seeing as we usually have been pretty spoiled with gold in terms of Retributor armor. That's one's always been a very good paint for us, but to go over to the army painter and be able to pick up this mega set and to have very nice coverage on metallics and have them perform very well is just you know mwah, chef kiss you didn't see the chef kiss but i did it i did the italian gesture don't you worry about it but uh, i also realized while i was painting that that oops i forgot his other plate under there because i couldn't get my dry brush far enough in there so just applied the little uh, little bit of that on there, just straight from the paintbrush. Picked out some of the buckles and details on toll, and we proceeded ahead. Ah, he's looking sharp now, looking real sharp. Just gotta pick out a few more details and he's ready for the table. Let's go ahead and let's take some more of that uh, mold berry and we'll actually just use that for the hilt of his sword. I actually think it's a really nice color at hand, like, I don't know, you know, it's it's nice to have options, but I think it just pop, makes it pop out a little bit more. I don't know, I looked at the box art, looked close enough to me. There you go. All right, so that is Callus and Tolan Companion is complete. So we'll do a nice little slideshow showing off all these and you know, we'll wrap it up here. So would I recommend the Army Painter War Paints Fanatic Mega Set? Absolutely. One of the reasons I decided to paint these miniatures is because they come in a wide range of colors and it was going to really put them through a stress test, kind of make sure that I have every color that I need to make what I need for these models. And the Mega Paint set absolutely did that. So maybe this is your chance to dip into the War Paints Fanatic and get started with a Mega set. So overall, positive reviews as we've covered before in my previous videos, but We'll close it out here on the last look at the Stormcast Eternal. I've been Tattooed Tabletop. Go paint something.